Nelly, tell us, what did you bring with, uh, to us with you? So this is a robot cat, so I can't bring my own cat. So um, I'm working on future concepts for our customers. And um, I want to um, improve the um, processes of our customers. And I'm wondering, how can we improve the quality inspection process of, yeah, for example, for the assembly of these toy cats? And Our topic today is artificial intelligence, so I'm pretty sure that AI can help us with that. So I hope that AI can help us, but before we look at AI, I think we should first look what we should improve. So how is the quality inspection done traditionally? So tr yeah, traditionally, traditionally, every part of this uh, cat um, should be assembled at the end. And before the assembly, every part is, um, has been taken through a visual quality control. And that means it's um, on a conveyor and sometimes there are some defects and the quality control process can detect this defect and sometimes not. So um, a typical rule of thumb we are using Uh, to answer the question whether KI can so AI can solve this problem is uh, would a human spot the same issue on a camera image? Yes, so it's, it's yeah, with this cat it's pretty easy to find out the defects. So we have in every part, um, in every leg we have some screws and sometimes the screws are missing and yes, as with the human eye you can um, detect this information or this Um, you can spot the defect. Okay, so the first step towards building an AI solution is we need to collect images of good parts and parts where screws are missing. Yeah, I'm, every time I'm really good prepared. So with my smartphone, I took some pictures for you, Ingo, of all the defects parts I found. Okay, so I see the images, but uh, so it's a typical problem we have that the data we get is collected ad hoc and not really clean data. So what we typically recommend in general is to take the data out of the process like it would be later used or collected when the classification of good and bad parts is done. So basically in your case we need to collect the images again from scratch. Okay. Um, uh, I thought I'm really good prepared. So you say we need really uh, Yeah, a good quality picture, so that means I have to take um, new pictures that you can use it for your um, quality process. Okay. So, and when we have the images, building an AI solution consists of three steps. So the first step is to label the images in good and bad. The second step is bad. we build a so-called deep neural network with machine learning, and this is deployed in the third step in the production. Deploy, machine learning. These are, come on, Ingo, this is very nerdy. Um, can you explain for all of us who are not um, yeah, very familiar with, with the AI topic every day? Okay, I will, mean? I will try. So the first step I mentioned is labeling. So we have collected all the images and now we need to describe what is seen on the images. So you can imagine that similar when I read with my two years old son a children book. So there is a book and there are images of cats and dogs and I tell him, okay, that's a cat, that's a dog. And that's how he learns what is what. And in the next step, he then can look at more complex images and he can on himself decide what is a cat, what is a dog, based on the learnings from the label data. And exactly the same way we train a neural network, just we provide not images of cats and dogs, but good and bad pieces. I like your example, Ingo, but um, how many pictures? I, okay, you, you can you can show your um, son some pictures of cats and dogs, but how many pictures I need for the AI at the end? So that's a question we typically cannot answer in general. A, a rough estimate, so often it's something between 300 and 1,000 images. But the good thing is also with AI, we can help there in the labeling process that the AI can ask what are the or that the AI asks for labels of images which are most valuable to the training process. Like my son would point at the above area of this image and ask, is that a cat or not? Okay, this, 
this sounds very easy for me. Um, if I told my kid this is a cat or this is a dog at the end, it knows exactly what a cat and a dog is. But I want to have the kid more intelligent and also the AI. So how can it learn at the end? Okay. So a neural network, which I just mentioned before, which is the brain of the AI solution, uh, a little bit oversimplified looks like this. So it's basically made up of layers of neurons. And to understand that a little bit better, let's play neural network together with the audience. So basically, we are now playing a neural network with two layers. So you and the audience are the first layer, and I am then the second layer. So a little bit more simple than this one. And to do the processing of the neural network, I would ask everybody to raise his hand if he thinks that is a defective part you see there. And who thinks that part is OK? OK. So I would be now the output of the neural network, and I would come up with the answer, OK, that's a bad part. Um, but you asked me how the neural network is learning. And in the learning process, we have the labeled data. So the neural network knows that there is a defective part. One person in the background raised the hand when it was uh, the question, is that part OK? And basically, what I would do when I know it's a bad part, I would stop to listen at that guy. And the same way the neural network learns, it stops listening at wrong information and then getting better and better. OK. The AI learns like a child. You give them information, and then you told the child it's good or not. And at the end, you have a, yeah, they, the child can make their own decision from the experience that it has. So that means we have now a very intelligent model. But to assemble these cat, we have to bring the model into the machine, Ingo. How can we do that? So. We as Siemens have to deploy the model in the factory to run it at the control. We have the TMNPU, which is basically a standard technology module which allows us to run the inference on the neural network. So evaluating the result of the neural networks in the production process to take decisions whether a part is good or bad based on camera images. But this module is not only for running inference on images, but also to for example, using machine data, so process data, like let's say you have a welding robot and use the time series data of the welding process, so the current and the uh, uh, voltage of the welding process, and you can predict the quality prediction on this data, for example. Sounds very easy, Ingo. So AI in a nutshell for the quality assurance is I have um, I need um, a very qualified data, like the pictures of our cat parts. Then I have to um, use this information to train the neural network. And before the training, I have to label, like with the kit, cat or dog, or is it a defect or it's not a defect. And after that, I, how can I bring the neural network in my machine? I deploy it to the um, S7 TMMPU. And then I'm able to run the neural network or to run the AI in my machine process. So that speeds up my process. And of course, it speeds, um, it's also generates um, less output. That means I can produce more ecological and economical. This is what we want at the end. Thank you, Ingo. Yeah, and if you have more AI questions uh, or more questions on AI, you can actually also come to our booth, which is over there, where we built the cats and dogs quality station, and you can see AI running. Siemens. Ingenuity for life.